I asked you which software I should try next for 30 days, and it wasn't even close. More than half of you said Blender. Named for a song by the Swiss duo Yellow, Blender is the rare piece of software that began as a commercial venture, went bankrupt, and re-emerged as open source, and thankfully now, forever free. What it does, very simply, is 3D. Modeling, materials, lighting, render, that's not all it does. But that's going to suffice for my first foray into Blender. All right, so here I am inside Blender. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just creating a sphere surrounded by a ring, nothing more. I want to do it for you, of course, so I'll press Control N, Command N on the Mac in order to create a new project, which starts with three discrete objects. We have a mesh right here in the center in the form of this cube. We also have a light. Notice this guy right there. And then we have a camera. And by the way, all three of the objects as well as many more are tracked up here in the scene panel in the top right corner of the screen. Now you're going to make your life so much easier if you set up the camera right away up front. So go to the view menu, choose cameras, and then choose active camera, or you can press zero on the numerical keypad and that will just align your view with the camera's view so you're seeing what it's saying and then return to the view menu choose cameras and choose frame camera bounds and that way from this point on you don't have to monkey with the camera it's already good to go now i don't want a cube so i'll click on it and i'll press the delete key not the backspace key by the way to get rid of it. Notice up here, if I hover over add, we have a keyboard shortcut of shift A. That's very useful. Shift A will bring up a list of meshes, including Taurus, which is gonna make a donut. Now, in another piece of software, I would tell you the following three items I'm about to show you are keyboard tricks. In Blender, they are essential functions. You do need to know them. First of all, in order to move the object around, you press the G key. That's G is in gosh, I have no idea why it's G. However, don't drag, just move your cursor and that will move the object. If you decide better, then press the escape key. If you want to rotate the object, you tap the R key. And again, don't drag, just move the cursor around like so. I don't want that either, so I'll press escape. I do want to scale this guy, so I'll press the S key for scale, and then I'll move my cursor like so until I have a great big donut. Now, I don't want it to be this thick, and so I'll switch from the object mode to the edit mode. You can do that just by pressing the tab key as well. And if you're enjoying this, if you're finding this to be incredibly useful then hang on to your socks because it's about to get better but in the meantime take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications all right now i'm going to drop down to this tool right here shrink fatten and you can drag this yellow doohickey to make the donut much fatter i don't want that i want it to be a kind of narrow tube something like that let's say two tastes it's up to you and then I'm gonna add a sphere by pressing shift A once again, and then I'll go with UV sphere. Icosphere is gonna give you a sphere that's made, a kind of a geodesic thing that's made of triangles. You don't want that. You want a UV sphere that's more in keeping with the way the globe works. We've got a North Pole and a South Pole and a bunch of latitude and longitude lines and so forth, and this works great. Now, because I'm working in the edit mode, these two shapes are automatically joined together and so now what I'll do is press the tab key notice it's called a collection now and both the sphere and the ring are one object now they have a lot of quadrangles as you can see here and so to smooth things out right click and choose shade smooth that does a better job, but notice this orange edge right here. You can see it's quite polygonal still. And if ever you just wanna take a moment and check out what you've done, then go up to the render menu and choose render image or just press F12. 
and then I'll go ahead and maximize this item and I'll zoom in as well. And you can tell if I zoom in quite a bit, actually, you can tell that we have some very polygonal edges. All right, so I'll just press the escape key to escape out. This next step is not one that I think you would discover on your own. What you have to do in order to make things smoother still is to click on modifiers right here and then you click plus and then with generate active, you drop down to this guy subdivision surface. <laughs> so obvious, right? And then levels viewport, go ahead and scrub that value up to its maximum, which is six. And now we have much smoother edges. 3D objects are always going to be rendered as polygons. However, you want as many basically straight edges as humanly possible as you can. And so now at this point, what I want to do is create a kind of split screen so I can see this object rendering on the fly. This is a little tricky. It's easy to get it wrong. You move your cursor up to the top right corner of this area right here of this viewport and you don't drag over here because if you do, you'll move the panel around and that'll just make you miserable. Instead, you drag right here and you'll create a split view like so. And then you can make it wider on one side than the other, at which point I want to switch this guy to viewport shading. However, another way to work that I find very useful, especially if you can't see that option, if it kind of disappears from view, you tap the Z key. In another country, you might call this the Z key and then click on rendered. So you're seeing a rendered version of the object. Now, it's not very satisfying at this point, and that's because we have too much ambient light. So go ahead and click on this guy world for the world properties and then click on color right here and take it down to black. And that way we're seeing this object against a black void. I really want it to be a void. I want it to be transparent. So I'll click on render right here. And you know, so far the software is making perfect sense. Get ready for a departure. But before we fully dive into that, I'd love to tell you a bit about how I got here. Diving into Blender for the past 30 days was incredibly rewarding, but also pretty challenging. Learning new creative software always pushes me to my limits. And that's exactly why I'm excited to share today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community tailored specifically for creatives like us. Whether you're dipping your toes in the 3D modeling, graphic design, animation, or photography, Skillshare offers thousands of expert-led classes designed to fit every skill level and every creative ambition. During my Blender challenge, one class that really stood out was Blender 3D, your first 3D animation by Southern Shoddy 3D. This class is perfect for getting your animations up and running. Skillshare's learning by doing approach means that you can immediately apply these lessons, share your progress, and get feedback from a community of fellow creatives. And whether you're interested in mastering illustration, unlocking your productivity, or even learning how to make compelling YouTube videos, Skillshare covers it all. The first 500 people to use my link in the description below will get a free one month trial to Skillshare. It's an amazing opportunity to turn your creative curiosity into real actionable success. So don't wait, click that link, join Skillshare and start exploring your potential today. All right, back to Blender and back to things not making a ton of sense. I'm going to go back and twirl sampling closed and twirl open film. And then you turn on transparent here. Who would think to go to film? I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. But anyway, now we have a transparent checkerboard background. And if you export this as a ping, for example, then you can integrate it into some other imaging inside of an image editor. The, the image editor of your choice, of course. All right, I'll click in this left-hand view right here. And then I want to assign a material. So I'll click on material down here. And then you want to click on new. You can load materials, PBRs, by the way. However, I'm just going to go ahead and crank up the metallic value 
so that we have a highly metallic surface. I might take the roughness down just a little bit so that we've got a whole lot of contrast. All right, now at this point, I am not going to assign a base color. You can if you want to, but I'm gonna leave my object white and I'm going to assign all the colors using lights. And this is where things get a little bit challenging, I would say, but an awful lot of fun as well, once you come to terms with it. Notice if you go to the view menu here, we've got viewpoint and you have some presets such as top and front and right, and they all have shortcuts. Seven for top, one for front and three for right. Left would be control or command three and so forth. So 731, just remember those seven gets me the top view at which point I can see my little light right here. And then I can move my light around. Oops, I'm not moving it. I'm changing its size. I'll go ahead and switch to the move tool right here and then drag it. And you can see that rendered view update on the fly. And this is a kind of on the fly rendering that is very common with games, for example, but it is known in this software as EV, after the Pokemon character you may be familiar with. Now, but apparently there's a thing called a backronym. Is that what it's called? Where you go back after you've already given the thing a name and you assign an acronym for it. And so EV stands for Extra Easy Virtual Environment Engine. Just, you know, jot that one down. But anyway, it does make for some very fast rendering. Now what I want to do is create a duplicate of this light. So I'll press Shift D. And by the way, don't drag. You now have a duplicate. Move your cursor and you'll see that you've got a duplicate light over here. Just move your cursor around. I'm sorry, move your mouse around, by the way. Cursor has a little bit of a different meaning in the software at any rate. I'm going to set it down and then I'll change its color right there to, let's say, this vivid shade of red. And I might crank up the radius as well. So I have a very big light and I could move it closer to the object like so. And then it's a good idea to take a moment to name your lights by the way. So I'll call this first one white because that's what it is. I can see it's a light. It's got a little light bulb there and I'll change the second one to red. In case you're wondering if you have different kinds of lights, you do. We've got point lights, which are just like, you know, bare bulbs. We've got sunlight, very, very distant light. We've got spotlights, you know what they are. And then area would be like light coming in from a window. In any event, I want more light, of course. So I'm going to press Shift D in order to duplicate this guy and just move my mouse. Now notice, it looks like it's at the right location in this view over here on the left-hand side, but that's because I'm looking down. If I press the one key to switch to, you know, the front or side view or whatever, you can see it's way too high. And by the way, I'll go ahead and drag this down, but I want to show you something. If you want to get around, notice this actually is where I want it to be. If you want to get around inside the software, you can also use the middle mouse button, by the way. And so if you press the control key or the command key on a Mac along with the middle mouse button, you can, you can zoom. And then if you just drag the middle mouse button, you will basically rotate your view like so. And, and then shift, I'll just say shift is going to allow you to pan. Now, this apparently causes a lot of confusion for Macintosh users. It, keep it simple. If you've got a magic mouse, you just move your finger. You just scroll. You just move your finger over the top of the mouse. With a trackpad, it's a two finger move. You don't drag, you just move it. And so it's actually a little bit easier than it is, I think, with this Logitech mouse I'm using here on the PC. But anyway, I'm going to drag this guy over and change its color to, let's say, a bright, vivid shade of green. And I could take the power down to 500 watts. I'm not an electrician, so I have no idea what that means. But I could also reduce the size of the radius a little bit if I want a harsher light and so forth. Actually, I'm going to take this down to 200 watts. Actually, no, no, I'm not. That looks terrible. 500 was great. All right, leave it where it is, Deke. And then I might drag this guy around the back just a little bit. Watch out. If you move it into the object, the light won't work nearly as well. And then I'll change this guy to green up here in the scene 
panel, that is. And now I want to add a bunch more light. So I'll just go ahead and press Shift D for this guy again and move my cursor. Again, move my mouse, that is to say. And I'm going to move it down. And then I want this guy to be a deep blue like so. And I'll just go ahead and call this guy deep blue. Actually, I'll call it blue is good enough. And I'll take the power back to a thousand screaming watts like so and that's looking pretty good and i could increase the radius value if i want to and i want to make sure that we get some shadows going so i'll press shift e again for this light and move it down over here about here might be good it's not far enough away so i am going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse just to zoom out watch the camera don't mess with it we spent all that time up front getting it right. There we go. Now I've got a little bit of a shadow going, which is what I want. And I could change the color of this guy too. I don't see any reason not to keep changing the color of these lights and renaming them as well so that I know which one's which. And then finally, I'm just going to add one more by pressing Shift D and I'll put it over here someplace and I'll change the color of this light to actually, you know what? I like it. I like this one being orange. I'll change this one over here to purple, let's say. A nice deep shade of purple like so. And then, of course, you can continue to go as nuts as you want. I just do recommend that you take a moment to name your objects, especially your lights, because it's very easy to get confused about those uh, even in my case, I don't even have that many lights. You may have way, way more. And then to check out what you've done to bask in your artwork, by the way, just go up to render and choose render image or press F12 once again, and then fill the screen with the image. And you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in as well. And this is how things look when you render them on the fly using EV, which isn't the only way to render, by the way. You can also render with Cycles, which is Blender's full on ray tracing engine. It's slower, but it's likewise far more accurate. See the difference? Harsh shadow, more diffuse highlight, complete with reflected ring. To see how it works, as well as how to export high resolution images and integrate them into, for example, Photoshop, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. In the meantime, let me know what you think. Want more, want less, comment below. And then subscribe and turn on notifications so you know the exciting things I have in store for the future. And whatever you do, don't forget to go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. Like Blender, it's forever free. I'm Deke McClellan, this is Deke Now.